Hi my friends, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed the glass with the orange slice in it with the water coming out. Uh, it's over on Patreon, if you want to go and take a look, it was fantastic. We were really happy with that. And all of um, my patrons are doing a fantastic job. Your paintings are absolutely fantastic. Um, so thank you so much again for your support. This week I'm going to paint something for a friend. Um, it is Court McSherry Beach down in Cork. And she don't know I'm giving it to her. Um, so it's going to be a nice little surprise, a nice present. Um, because she does a lot for me. So I have a canvas ready here behind me. It's a very wide canvas. It's 20 inches by 8. I have a palette set up. Lots of lovely colours, so it's going to be a nice beach scene with a nice kind of a dark sky. So very contrasting colours, very eye-catching, I hope. Um, and um, yeah, it's going to be a bit of fun. So let's crack on and have a bit of fun with this. If you're looking for a, a beach scene or, you know, something similar like that, just to get started and to learn how to approach something like this, this is the tutorial for you, okay? Um, you'll learn a lot in this about colour mixing, blending, all that kind of thing. So, uh, yes, let's have a bit of fun and don't go anywhere. Okay, here we go. Um, so, what I'm going to do first is, I'll tell you what colours I have, okay? I have a paper palette and I have titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow, a little burnt cyanide, some Elizabeth crimson, some less burnt umber, some phthalo blue, cobalt blue, and black. Okay, I think they should do. I think that we should have enough in those. I might add, you know what? I might add a touch of cadmium red as well. Just a little touch in case I need it, okay? Save me doing it later. And uh, that's it, really. Um, looking at the reference photographs there, you can see there's a lot of mauves in that. So I might, I might try a little magenta um, as well. So my apologies. Let me just get some... You know, when you look at reference photographs close up and all that, you can kind of see certain colours, don't you? So maybe just a touch of magenta as well. Um, so a lovely colour for pal palette today. Now, I think, I suppose, it's just re really a case of cracking on. I'm going to put in the horizon line, and that is where the water meets the land, okay? Now, it seems quite high. Also, I primed this um, board, this canvas once, Okay, it's pretty much almost dry uh, with one coat of oil based primer. Okay, now I'm going to go across like that. There's a very slight angle on it. Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not, but very, very slight angle. And then the beach kind of comes along like that. Okay, and then we have a kind of a bright or sandy color coming on like that. Um, now, the land, we only need to be very rough with the land, but I want to get a true likeness to the photograph as well and i have kind of stretched this slightly so it may be a little bit higher maybe just a little going up like that then we have cliffs lots of cliffs going along like that comes kind of down almost to a point um i think that's all we need to do folks i think that's it okay let's crack on crack on and get a bit of paint on this i'm going to use a large flat um, actually, I'm just going to clean my stubby here because it's a little bit on the hard side. I didn't clean it properly the last day, so it's just a little bit firm. I'm just giving it a rub on my easel with some turpentine, just a timber part of my easel, just to kind of loosen the fibres of the brush. That's really all, okay? Um, that will loosen it back up then again right away. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm enjoying I'm looking forward to painting this. Something nice and refreshing for a change, okay? Um, we did lots of sunsets um still lives in the last couple of weeks so i think something nice and soft like this a nice fresh bright landscape will make a nice difference so uh, i hope you enjoy it okay now i'm taking a damp brush i still have a tiny touch of green in my brush but it's not too bad and i'm going to put a nice dark sky in so let's take some white and then i'm going to go with phthalo blue a little of phthalo blue and I'm going to take a little hint of magenta. I might try the magenta because that sky is really a dark. Let's take a hint of black. It's a dark kind of a bluey, warm, pinky blue kind of a color. Um, so more phthalo, a little more magenta. And I did take a hint of black. So I keep adding little touches of this color now as I need, okay? You could maybe even try a hint of crimson as well. 
So give that a good mix, okay? Really nice mix. Mix up, mix up a nice bit of this now. Don't be shy about the paint. A little more phthalo. I, I think I have pretty much what I want there, okay? Don't know if you can see that very well now on camera. I hope the camera now doesn't pack up halfway through and start changing its own mind about colours and all that kind of stuff. Right, um, I take, think I'll take a little more of the magenta and a hint more crimson. So I think that's a bit cold. I wanted a nice warm, uh, what I'm going for really, I suppose, is a nice, nice warm navy colour, okay? So plenty of pinks in this. A little more phthalo. It's more on the ready side of navy, all right? Very, very dark, warm navy. Pop that in all the way across, okay? We'll get some nice cloud effects in here then in just a moment. More crimson, more phthalo, a little more magenta. The magenta really does warm up that blue. Ah, you see, that's a little bit better now. That's more what I was thinking. So let me just get some more of that. More magenta, a little phthalo. And it's that kind of nice warm, purpley blue that I'm kind of going for. I want this really a nice dark, dark sky, okay? Because it really, there's a lovely contrast between that bright land and that dark sky. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And that's why I kind of picked this photograph because you know when you're looking for something to paint, you kind of stumble across something that really just kind of stands out. And that's what I do. I just look for something that really stands out. Now, let's go all the way along here. I'm going in a kind of a slight angle with my brush strokes as well. And I'm going to start adding some more white and then a little magenta into that. Now, you could use crimson as well if you want, okay? Um, but the magenta seems to be just kind of working at the moment, so I'll go with magenta. And bring that right down there a touch of turpentine just to help it floor a little bit better more magenta and pull that across along the top of my land i'm going to pull it upwards into the sky all right so the clouds are kind of swooping down isn't that right now, if you were kind of nervous about painting skies, you could even just leave it at that. Um, that would be a perfectly fine sky to paint as well. But I want to add a little bit of movement into it. So I'm just going to take a little white and a touch of magenta. And I'm just going to kind of go over here and just add a little bit of movement. Just a little bit of movement of the clouds kind of coming in from the left over there. You can see it on the photograph. Just a little bit, sort of flicking it across. Kind of up and down, up and down. You see, I've just been very loose with my brush, that's all. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous at all. All right, then we'll take another bit of white, but again, a touch of magenta. And just gonna, you see, just kind of brighten it a little bit here and there. And just dab your brush around. Let it kind of fizzle off into that dark blue. Again, give my brush a wipe. I'm going to come over here and give that a little bit as well. Some more white, a little touch of magenta. And just kind of, let's just drag this across. We don't really have to put clothes as such in over here. It's just a bit of a light spot off in the distance, that's all. And then I want to add a few clothes. A little touch of magenta again. A few little clouds kind of popping through here and there. Now, this is very loose because I'm going to be pulling some nice dark clouds through this as well. So I'm going to deepen the clouds just a little bit more. But this is just kind of just to add a little bit of texture to the sky, that's all. And let's pull that across, okay. Already, we have a pretty good, pretty good sky there. But I just want to darken it a bit. So I'm going to take some more colour. Now, I might have enough phthalo blue there to work with. Phthalo blue, some magenta, and a hint of black. That should give us a nice dark. Now, I'm going to create some nice 
rich bands of color now that's a little bit still a little bit cold so i'm going to take a little bit more magenta in that and the magenta is really helping giving that lovely pinky warm pinky color to the blue a little bit more magenta let's go along like that look and what i'm going to do is just sort of allow this to dissipate up into the sky and all i'm doing is going around in little circles with the tip of my brush okay just like that see going around in circles and up and down up and down and let it all kind of merge together very nicely okay there we are and we come down then i just want to kind of let it again disappear off into that bright spot over there you see now this may be a little bit strong so let's go over that again just kind of soften it across okay like that and then i'll take another hint of magenta just to warm that very slightly and i'm going to come over here and put a nice another dark cloud so this is kind of the bottom of the cloud that we're looking at here okay and the top part disappears up into the lighter you see so i'm only kind of working in the bottom edge of the cloud that's all i'm doing and don't overthink it just keep this nice and simple okay now even that is fine as it is it's completely fine if you want to leave it at that just leave it at that but i just want to add another little bit up here a little bit of warmth so i just put a little bit more magenta into the mix okay just a touch i want to make this really nice warm pinky bluey kind of a sky pinky purple kind of a color you see what i mean and that will really complement the pinks down here then you see so that's kind of what i'm thinking about i'm thinking ahead um, especially when painting something like this you need to think ahead with your colors um, and see that you have certain colors somewhere so kind of move those colors around try to complement them as best you can okay now i'm happy with that okay we leave it at that i think now i'll just soften this very gently with my soft blender brush okay and just pull it across very lightly straight across that just takes some of the brush strokes out just helps to soften the clouds back in slightly i think june is going to love this this is for june okay that will do fine moving on to the land let's get a nice little brush here for our land i have a nice little flat brush okay number four flat these are all soft soft synthetic brushes and i'm going to start with that uh let me see let me see i'll go with that warm color off up here okay i don't want it mixing in the blue too much so i'm going to go with some naples yellow i'm going to take a hint of magenta that should give me that nice warm it's like a straw field or wheat field but there's a hint of warmth in it let me take a hint of crimson so that gives us this nice kind of it's almost like a salmon color okay and just use tiny amounts don't overdo it too fast just pick up little amounts now i don't know should i just try that and go with that and see okay now isn't that lovely lovely bright kind of a sunlit straw kind of a color so let's mix up plenty of that now i want to mix up a good bit of this um crimson and naples yellow And let's just fill that in just cut into that blue doesn't matter if it mixes ever so slightly into it that's fine okay and we'll bring it down and come over here where it just goes down onto the cliffs and i'm going to just make it slightly longer over here now i'm going to just darken it slightly at the bottom okay just to give it a bit of shade so i'm taking a little bit of crimson into that and i'm going to try a hint of burnt umber all right so a pinky brown and i'm just going to soften a bit of pinky brown down towards the end of that i barely have any paint on my brush now okay it's really a kind of a dryish brush very kind of a dryish technique okay let me just make sure now that looks good i'm going to just adjust my camera ever so slightly i hope you don't mind just want to bring it up just a little okay and there we go 
All right. Now, you could lighten it even more, just at the top. Let's take some Naples yellow, and let's take a hint of white. And I'm just going to cut into the sky. I want this really to separate from the sky nicely. So, Naples yellow and little white. And let's just pull that across and pull it down then softly. But we will come back to some of this if we feel we need to lighten it again. Let's go into our greens. Lovely rich greens. So, a nice colourful painting today. Um, nice rich greens. I'm going to go with a uh, little black. The cadmium yellow now the thing about greens with this is because we have a lot of warmth in our reference photograph okay if you put very cold blues in there it might it might look strange at the end so warm greens so i'm thinking cadmium yellow pale some black and a little burnt cyan let's try that and even though this looks very dark now I'm going to make it slightly brighter, okay? A bit more yellow and then a hint of white. Let's go over a hint of white. Just to lighten it slightly. Let me just try this now for a moment, okay? Yeah, that's not bad. I'll go with that and I can always add a slightly cooler colour in to some parts then, just here and there, okay? So I'm just going to simply go up, fill this in all the way. Don't worry about details, don't worry about houses, bushes, all that kind of thing, okay? I'm just filling in the entire area with this colour first. Bit more yellow. I pull some yellow out on the brush just on its own, okay? Because I'm going to soften that into that green there. It's going to come across. Like that and when you're painting something like this it's always a good idea to pull the brush in the direction that the fields are kind of coming down so you can see I'm pulling my brush down at a kind of an angle like this and that helps create the the shape of the field all right and I'm going to bring this up here a little bit more I don't want this to be completely flat up here either now I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and a little cobalt blue now I'm going slightly cooler this time, a little bit of white, and I'm just going to add a slightly cooler colour through this here and there. You can, if you like, just keep it the warm colour, but I think a slightly cooler colour, just to add a bit of light into the landscape, will make a difference. So I'll sit back now, just take a quick look at that. All right, just make sure you're happy with everything. And then we have a nice little row of bushes up there. I'm going to take a small pointy brush and I'm going to take some phthalo blue, some black and a little yellow. I'm going to make a very dark blacky green for this. Plenty of turpentine in this. And I'm just going to cut into, see that line where they meet? Just go along there like that. Take a hint of burnt umber maybe i think it's probably a bit too cold and i'm simply going to separate that field with this now as you go along you can suggest hints of rows of bushes and things like that look just one or two little trees popping up here and there it only needs to be a small impression of them that's all do you know what? don't go don't go crazy all right, just like that. And I am going to, hmm, let me see. I'll do the same just where there's a, another big field cut, cutting across this hair like that, okay? Just put a line down, then just go along and create some little bushes. Little hedge, row of hedge and row of trees, all that kind of thing. Just pop it in to point your brush just here and there, okay? I can pop a little light in here and there as well in a moment. You could even take just some burnt umber and so on. Pop some brown trees in here and there. Now 
and let me see then up along here now there's a couple of rows of trees up here as well isn't there so i'm just going to put them in very lightly as well just very generally okay you see i'm not kind of uh i'm not looking at the photograph too much but i can see there's a couple of them just popping up here and there so just pop them in very loosely Again, as I keep saying, it's all about just making an impression of the scene. That's all. I'm going to soften that down into the field just to take the hard edge off of it. You see, just flick it down with your brush. Okay. See, that looks quite good. Um, okay, now, how are we doing? We're doing pretty good so far, aren't we? Let's take some bright yellow, little Naples yellow. And it's going to pop little light on some of those trees now I know they are very very far away they're so far off in the distance but I just want to catch a little bit of light here and there just from the sun up in the sky just pop it in dab 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 pop a bit through the field here and there uh, we've another row coming across like that. So you can see, I've just been very loose with all of this. And even though it's mixing into that colour underneath, it's okay. It doesn't matter. If you pick up that lighter green underneath, that's completely fine as well. Let's put a couple up here. Just basically filling in all the way up. Now I'm going to just pull them out very slightly. Um, it's all about not having kind of very sharp, sharp lines, okay? Now I might darken some of them. So I'll take a little black little cadmium yellow it's hardly any there's hardly any yellow in this really it's mostly black okay little cobalt blue and just darken some of them here and there just to bring them out that little bit more okay now Moving on, we have some lovely little houses up there, don't we? I'm going to put in some nice little bright white houses. Take a tip of your brush, grab some, grab some white, and let's just pop a few suggestions of houses in up there. So let's put one here. Okay, again, just keep taking little touches of white off your brush. Suggest a little peek. Don't worry about the roofs just yet. We have another one next to it here. There are only small, small, small little suggestions, okay? It's just an impression, that's all. They're so far away, you're going to see hardly any detail on these. In fact, some of them are even just little tiny dabs with the brush. Okay. And a lovely little impression of a little row of houses up there in the distance. So I'll clean my brush. Take a little black. In fact, it's not black at all. It's actually a light grey. Let's take some black and mix it in with this colour here. And let's just pop some little roofs on these. You see, it's just an impression. Don't go crazy with so, so much detail. Okay? And we could even just take a little black on its own and suggest 
couple of windows here and there. Again, just remember, it's only suggestion. See what I mean? You can see it's only just little dabs of colour, but it tells you that they're little houses, doesn't it? It tells you. It's all about telling a story with painting. Press them a few telegraph poles here and there. Then I'm going to just pick up some of that bright green. I'm just going to pop some of that bright green in front of some of those. And that's just going to sit them down just a little. See? Just very loosely. Now I'll take a little Naples yellow and I'm just going to cut in front of some of those little ditches up there with some Naples yellow. Just creating a little texture in that field and perhaps just up there as well. And I know I'm kind of really spending a lot of time now on this but I just really want to create a nice impression in this scene. Um, okay, now I just want to soften that colour in the background there, okay? This lighter colour, I'm going to add a flick of maybe burnt umber into that just here and there. I think just to add, a, I suppose just add a bit of texture to it really. So it's not so much kind of in your face then, understand? Maybe take a bit of light colour, a bit of green. And that's a bit better. Now let's move on to our cliffs. The cliffs are simply, um, I'm just going to use the same brush, little flat brush, Naples yellow, burnt sienna and some magenta. I'm going to start with this colour first, okay? Maybe a little brighter, some white, more Naples yellow. There's a lot of pink in these cliffs. They're very pinky cliffs actually. So I'm just painting it very lightly like that. Look, pull it down. Comes up slightly here, doesn't it? And it drops again. And this is basically just the base color that I'm painting. The undercoat, let's call it. And it comes over here. Falls down. And let's bring it across under that slightly. And up again. Now I'm going to add some darker colours into this. Burnt umber, little black, and I'm just going to start darkening it here and there. And you can see I'm using the kind of the bristles of the brush as well to create little crevices and little cracks and rocks and all that kind of thing. So I'm using, you know, you don't have to use any particular technique, I'm just pulling it down here and there. And it's creating the impression of the rock for me. Okay, a little more black. And I'm going to pull a little into those over there. A little more burnt umber. You can see I'm dipping right in to the colour on my palette, okay? Pulling them down. So it's coming together slightly, isn't it? It's just... It's all about, I find, simplifying it. Trying to keep it simple is probably the most difficult part of a painting because you tend to get bogged down with the details. And I'm just looking at this now and I'm thinking, simplify, simplify, simplify. Okay, that's all I'm doing. And I come over here, nice and dark over here. A 
Okay, so let's sit back. Sit back and take a look at that. I just need to move my camera again ever so slightly. Okay, there we go. And at this stage, I would probably even soften some of these in like this, okay? Just pull them down. And then we'll get our small detail brush to start adding little details to all of this. Now, there we go. Okay, small brush. And this is coming on quite nice, isn't it? Um, we have a lot of, a lot of dark colours in there. Let's take some burnt umber first, the black. I might even take a hint of magenta in that as well. That will just help warm it slightly, so it's not pure black. And I'm going to start just putting in just... It's not detail as such, it's just some nice dark spots here and there. You see what I mean? It's just like little squiggles of paint, that's all. And there's no particular technique when doing this really it's just a case of trying to make it look busy you understand trying to make it look like there's a lot going on that's what i try to kind of achieve so creating that nice dark point up on top of the cliff, that nice dark line, nice ridge. Take more black, more magenta, and let's go along here. And then we can start just kind of filling in those dark spots. We used to think, you can see those kind of dark spots just coming down. Just bring some little lines down. That's all you have to do. Because we're going to be putting some nice lighter colors and nice light grays on this as well. So just I'm creating kind of the dark spots first. Okay, now the lighter colours. We have lots of lovely lighter colours in here, don't we? So let's go right into the white first. And I'm going to take some of this lighter colour that we used earlier. This kind of a Naples yellow and a hint of Sienna. I'm going to pull that into the white. We have a nice bright sandy colour. And let's just start creating some of the highlights in some of the rocks. Okay. And I'm just kind of looking very briefly. At this. Clean your brush well in between. That will really help. So you can just see it now coming together. It's slowly but surely sort of coming to life, isn't it? Nice bright colour down there. It's kind of falls down. And it just looks very like a gravel, like a very fine gravel sort of a kind of a feeling towards it. So I'm going to just drag some nice bright colour across the bottom of this as well, just to sort of close this off at the bottom. Okay, just even let it sort of soften upwards as well into some of these cliffs. Okay. And we just simply keep going with this. Let's just keep going. Let's drag it right across here. I'm creating a lovely separation now between because there's a little bit of a sandy gravel area over there you can kind of see it where the beach kind of continues around i'm just going to put this in
and a couple of little highlights over here and there as well. And uh, you know, this is almost finished, this section, just keeping it simple. Now what I'm going to do is just really add some very bright highlights. Just taking a little touch of white and just popping it in here and there, okay? Just to really set off some of those rocks. over there okay now I think I'll leave it at that let's continue on and let's do this lovely lovely ocean I'm giving my brush a really good clean I have some green on my brush in fact I think I might switch I'll go with a nice clean brush okay and give that a wipe I'm gonna pick up some nice colors here now I might get need to get some phthalo blue on my palette again um, so similar colours to the sky, very similar. Let's take some phthalo blue, some magenta, and go with a little white. Now, even that's not bad, I reckon. It's not a bad colour. Let me try this. Okay, that's okay. So I'm going to now mix plenty of it. Plenty of phthalo blue. Plenty of magenta, a little bit of white, and the white really gives it that luminosity. It really makes it look very nice. And let's just pull this up there. And I'm keeping this nice and warm and kind of pinky for a reason. Um, it'll be much easier to soften in my sandy colours to a warm blue rather than a cold blue. If I put a very cold blue and I try and mix sandy colours into it, it's going to get very muddy. So what I do is I make the blue nice and pinky and warm. Okay, a little bit more pink in this, maybe a bit of white, uh, a touch of crimson even. That will warm it even a bit more. Now you can see I'm kind of softening this. You see that bit of white I just put in? I'm going to soften this up into the white, just very gently. I'm hardly touching it. So it's almost disappearing into the white, but it's not quite, do you understand? And it's not perfectly straight either. You see? Then coming down, I'm going to warm it now even more. I'm going to go with plenty of white. Plenty of magenta and plenty of crimson. And it's all mixing together on this little patch here. You see, so I have bits of blue coming into it. And I'm going to come down and pop that in. There, okay. You can see that kind of a pinkish strip we have on the beach. It's kind of half sand, half water kind of a feeling. So I'm just going to pop that in there. So you can see now I have more pink in this. Now a bit of crimson and a bit of Naples yellow. Soften that back in. You can see we've all these wonderful colours coming into the painting, don't we? There we go. I'm going to finish this little pinky corner here, okay? It's a very warm, sandy colour. I'm going to go with crimson, a bit too much there, and some Naples yellow. And I'm going to just fill in perhaps a hint of burnt umber. So that's giving me a warm, warm sandy colour. Bring it up there. And I'm actually going to turn it slightly, pull it back in here, okay? So it comes out and it turns, you see? You see the way the beach kind of turns like that, very sharply. Pulling that sandy colour right down and then using the tip of my brush, pull it across nice and straight. Again, I'll take some magenta, some crimson and a hint of burnt umber 
with some white and perhaps a hint of black actually should give me a warm browny pinky color and don't worry I haven't forgotten about this bright part either okay I'll be putting that in just want to get this in get the general shape of the beach done okay so there we go that's the general shape of the beach the water all is in everything is finished there um, I have a lovely crest of a wave breaking don't we I'm gonna put that in here now first of all I just want to lighten just a little bit of that color over there that blue I want to just kind of illuminate it slightly so I'm taking some phthalo blue lots of white and a little magenta but I want lots of white in this and I'm just going to let's try this now first go with that first then I'm going to go with a very bright blue some phthalo blue and white just those two colors together I'm going to pop a bit of this in now that gives it a lovely luminosity doesn't it that's really nice I like that okay so I'm going to use the same brush because this is a nice flat tipped brush a nice pointy flat brush for this little crest of a wave we have coming in here and it's just a nice simple dark color some crimson some burnt umber maybe a little black and some magenta so it's a very kind of a dark purpley color dark plummy sort of a color and I'm just going to first go across like this with that okay just to get the initial edge of that in the top edge all right let me take a tiny hint of phthalo in this it's a very deep purple and I'm going to just come down and turn it okay like that you see now you see it's mixing into the color underneath so just give your brush a little clean and then start again and pull it out like so and I'm going to just simply come down and drag it out at an angle and just give it a little wiggle does that make sense I'm softening it into the sandy kind of a beach then it's just been softened in that's all let's continue on and you may find this a little bit difficult to do but just make it your own if you have your own technique use your own technique there's no problem just I'm creating a little bit of a crest of a wave just kind of starting to form do you understand you see I'm just kind of pulling some of the color through the sand it just helps to translate it down into the sand that's all now the next thing I'm going to do is just to bring that to life I'm going to in fact what I will do I will add a little bit of purple so phthalo blue and magenta I might just add a little hint of that purple very dark purple in here and there now that's a bit that's a bit bluey let's try a bit of crimson just give it a little few darks here and there I find some darker colors will help bring it to life okay just here and there rather than just being the same all the way through now that's a little better 
that's a little better okay so i'm going to take my small brush i'm going to make a nice luminous color a nice bright luminous mauve so phthalo blue white and a little so um a, a little magenta i'm going to go across the top of this and just create a little bit of light catching some of the foam up there okay it's not too bright but i can see just little bits of it catching and that just helps to separate the front from the back this helps separate this wave from the ocean behind okay just that little bit of light you see i think it works bring it across and then i'm going to go really bright with some phthalo blue and white over here you can see a nice bright piece coming along that disappears then into this you see and pop a little even a little white as well here and there on the top of those just to give that a little bit of a sparkle okay now it gets nice and broad over here doesn't it And we can even continue slightly that line over here just to show the beach kind of curling around, curls around over there. All right. Now I'm going to put a slight hint of a reflection on the beach as well. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a nice little hint of a reflection just on the beach. So a little bit of white from these houses is kind of casting a reflection down. I'm just going to pull a tiny bit of white out and let's just pull a little bit of white through the sand, just like that, okay? I think that will really bring the sand to life, won't it? Like that. Then I'm just going to soften it down with my brush and soften across it. Okay. I'm keeping this all simple now. I'm just keeping all of this lovely and simple for you. I must get some more thinners. A little bit of thinners there. One thing I want to do is just soften the cliff ever so slightly. I'm going to take this brush I just used, okay? Just give it a quick clean. I just want to soften some of these just to take some of the hard edges off of some of them, okay? So they're not as sharp, sharp edged. So I'm just dabbing this along over some of those lines. You see? Just like that. That'll help just make them, give them a little bit more distance I think moving on to this very bright white here it's very bright isn't it give my brush a really good clean get all of this color off and I'm going to just take some white I need to get more white actually I've no white left white is probably the only color that you will go through a lot of isn't it I got through tons and tons of white. Let's take some white. Naples yellow. And I'm going to pull that in. A little bit more Naples. Pull it across like this and I'm going to kind of allow it to soften in here and there but not too much I want to keep the line do you understand what I mean I want to keep the actual line I'm just going to let it soften in ever so slightly and even through those reflections that's lovely you see now even that's enough you don't really have to go overboard with all of this that's more than enough 
the next thing I'm going to do is uh, let's pop one or two little people walking on the beach. Let's take some cyanide. Again, this is just to add a bit of life into the painting. I'm simply painting little carrots, okay? Small, small, tiny little carrots. Put a little dot up there and pull a tiny kind of a shadow out. That just sits them down on the beach. So they're not just kind of floating there. Let's pop another one over here. Could be a little child running around or something. Impression of little bits and bobs on the beach. You know, just little look, little bits and bobs. It can be whatever you want it to be. All right. Whatever you like. Um, all right. I'm going to take a little dark color. I'm just going to put a little dark color in under some of these and actually behind some of those as well very dry brush just drag it off the brush ever so gently just a touch and pop a little dark under some of those lights that will give it a little bit more depth and kind of bring it to life as well and my friends I think we're finished. I don't feel the need to keep going with this. Um, I really don't. I think we've done, we've achieved what we wanted. It's nice. I want to keep it nice and simple, but creating a nice little beach scene. Okay. I just wanted to keep a nice simple scene. Uh, maybe a touch of bright white. I know it's not on the photograph. Maybe a touch of bright white just here and there on some of these just to accentuate that wave kind of crashing and beginning to turn in. Okay, just a little impression, maybe just one or two just there as well. And I think that's it, I've achieved what I wanted. The last thing I wanna do is pop one or two seagulls in, small seagulls, I go this side. So to balance the painting, we have a lot going on here. So I pop one or two small seagulls in here. I normally pick three, an odd number. That usually works well. Then take a little bit of black and pop a little black on the ends. And then a touch of black just in the center to show their legs kind of hanging down. It's a nice simple way of painting little seagulls and it works, it's very effective. So that's it my friends, we're done. Let me sign this. I'll come over to the light part here and sign it here, okay? S. Conway. And this is Court Mac Sherry down in Cork. Beautiful, beautiful part of the world, Court Mac Sherry. Um, I can see now I'm just gonna refine some of the bushes here. Pop some lights in. I might add a slightly lighter colour just underneath some of those just to highlight that field a little bit more and I'm calling it finished my friends we are done thank you so much for watching I don't know if I can zoom in with this now as it is but I'll try there we go Fort McSherry nice simple beach scene you know just keep it nice and simple little people just a small hint of a suggestion that's all it is okay your mind will fill in the blanks and that's it let me just unhook this now Let's see if i can unhook it nice and carefully um, and there we go done thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoy that join me again next week for another fantastic tutorial um, each week there's something different a different theme it uh, could be anything so that's what i like about painting it's just whatever you feel like at the time whatever grabs you okay um try to kind of mix it up a bit don't paint the same types of scenes all the time because you become very limited and 
you become nervous about trying something different. So just grab a brush and just try something completely different. It will work, I promise, and it will help you with your technique as well and your confidence. So that's it. I'll see you next week. Um, happy painting and God bless.